Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast, here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, March 5, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? What we have is a number of things. Obviously, we got some volatility back in the market. She's moving a little bit. First, we'll take a look at the big picture stuff. We had the trend line. A lot of traders on YouTube, a lot of people, I shouldn't say traders, a lot of people on YouTube thought that trend line was a joke. They didn't believe in it. They shit on my trend line. And guess what? It's not my trend line. You shit on Mrs. Market's trend line. The market draws the trend line, not the person. She drew the trend line by virtue of making a high in 2000. And I'm going to get to something really slick in a moment. This is March, and it's actually March 24th. Keep that in mind. Write that down for a second. Put it on a sticky note. March 24th, the year 2000. And then we have another high, January of 2022. And then we have the current high right now. Now. They spent a day over it. They closed above it last week. They peeked their head above it, peekaboo above it yesterday. And here they are below it. The trend light is important. It's such a large time frame. It's such a big sliver or slice or swath, I should say, of the market that being above or below the trend line, above by a little bit, above by even a few points, isn't a big deal in the big scheme of things. We talked about that yesterday. It still holds true today. All right, so what do we have on the board? So we gave up, or Mrs. Market gave up, the last breakup candle low in the sequence, and hence she came down to test these recent lows over here from the 27th of February, the 29th of February, the 28th of February, over there. And here's something interesting also. You take this high, because this high is important. We know that because the market told us that high is important. How so? Market ran up to that point, even though it was a one-day wonder, were then summarily rejected in the downward direction, and therefore, when back up, this became and becomes and still is a breakout area. Markets like to come back and test breakout areas. It's 503.50. Now, what does 503.50 coincide with? It coincides with the next breakup candle low in the sequence, give or take. The 20 period moving average just below the last breakout area in the sequence. 503.50, give or take, even if they spike, it is an important spot. That 20 period moving average on the daily chart is also known as home base. Markets like to A, not get too far from home base. And yes, come back and double check in at home base. Another look from a weekly chart perspective, you can see the trend line, you can see price trades up into the trend line and finds overhead resistance at the trend line. The first order of overhead resistance is they stop going in the direction they're going, in that case upward. The second order of business is they either go sideways or they retreat back in the other direction. Let's do something off the beaten track. We're going to talk a little bit about cycles. Now, cycles, I always call them part art form, part science. There is some science to cycles, but there's a lot of art form that most people just don't take the time to figure out for themselves. As you know, if you've been around here a while, I always look for things, A, that other people either don't look for, can't see, won't see, don't see, aren't aware of, all that stuff. I like numbers. I like when things match up. I like when a lot of things point to the same thing. It's one of those V8 moments where you hit yourself across the head and say, listen, that's got to be worth something. So here, here's what we have. The high right before the dot-com crash, the first connector of the trend line all the way down here is March 24th of 2000. If you fast forward exactly 24 years, that's March 24th, 24 years, you're at March 24th of this month. Okay, fair enough. Is that going to be a meaningful point in time? It may be specifically if the market is trading up into that period of time. Why is that? Well, there's more stuff. How about this? 
got a spring equinox on the 19th, but we have a full moon lunar eclipse on the 25th of March. How you doing? That's a bona fide tinfoil hat event if I ever saw one. It's called a penumbral lunar eclipse. Look it up. Now, this one doesn't count. It deserves a mulligan, but when you fast forward from this high two years, you're removed by a couple of months, but it's close. Almost another 24 months. It's close. We're giving it a mulligan. Doesn't really fit, but it was worth mentioning. 24 years, about 24 months, the 24th. You got a lunar eclipse on the 25th. You see what I'm saying? To me, that starts to look somewhat cyclical. You're at the same trend line when all this is occurring. Now, grant that you're a couple of weeks removed, but look where we are now as we discuss this. We're at the trend line that connects all these important things we just mentioned, and here comes a lunar eclipse. We'll see. Tinfoil hat event. Write it down. Put it on a sticky note. What else we have from a market perspective this week? We got Jerry's on the Hill for a couple of days. Jerome Powell is testifying in front of Congress Wednesday and Thursday. I believe it's two days. I think you have a phony jobs number coming this week. There's plenty of room for some more volatility. By the way, the 24th of March is also Purim. A lot of stuff happening around that time frame. Hard to believe it's not going to be some kind of a culmination slash shift. What do I mean by that? Well, I believe that everything has a beginning and an end. I think that's pretty well known. When one thing ends, a new thing begins. Hence, into these tinfoil hat events, for example, or culmination of cycles, for example, markets have a tendency to trade up or down into these events. I'm not saying the market's trading up into the 25th or 4th or whatever. I'm saying it could trade down or up into one of these events and turn. So we have to be aware of what's going on, and then we have to be in tune with what the market's doing into these events. We would be looking for a turn. By the way, go back to the video from the 29th of February, the title page, thumbnail, whatever you want to call it, is looking for a top. At least as today goes, we got it. We don't know if it's a one-day wonder or is more to come, but so far from a short-term perspective, we got a top. Lazy Swing Trader was picking up shorts. We've got some shorts. We've got some longs. We've got shorts that were working today. We've even got longs that were working today. What's going on inside the numbers? Let's review the early morning notes, the zero dark 30 stuff, and go on from there. It was turnaround Tuesday, starting out with some red on the screen. Right away, we've got the door open for 510.35. That was pretty early in the morning. If below that, you got 509 and a quarter. We think better in pictures. Right of the vertical is today's activity. This purple box you see here is the activity in that range between 510.35 and 509 and a quarter. And let me explain. Let me explain, Lucy. They open below 510.35, which opens the door for 509 and a quarter. What I said in the live room was they don't have to get there. That's a general area, give or take, where they should bounce the tape. They used the 10 o'clock data release, I think, to bounce the tape. They got right back to and above 510.30, which was A, magnetic, B, overhead resistance, and C, the pivot. Did we have some traders long riding it up there? Absolutely. They took profit. Nice job. Did we have traders that shorted the pivot and wrote it down? Yes. Nice job. Let's move on. You can pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. You can see all this in the pre-market, same thing about the 510.35, 509.25, and they were in that range for a while. You already saw that. Then as the market struggles, you have to open up the door for lower stuff like 508.50, 508. Now you can see here they came into that price area, 508.50 to 508. They really didn't spend too much time there. They got right underneath it and went to the next place. Well, let's find out what the next place is. We have to know the next place if we're trading on the long side of the market and we're buying 508.50 down to 508 you have to know what the next place is before you enter the trade you have to be either willing to take the ride if they go down or know where you're wrong and you may want to re-enter another trade at the lower number where is it now you scroll up a little bit and we'll find it at 507.20 508 is the bogey 
The bulls have to establish price above or it's 507.20. And there's your bounce at 507.20. It pays to know your numbers. You could see where it was resistance later. They went lower. They went to the next number. And you'll see the next numbers are on the board here. 505.35. It's all in here. Again, pause the video. Do the homework. Read the notes. Do the diligence. Go back to the chart to double check the work. 505.35. How you doing? And a pretty good rip into the end of the day off 505.35, give or take. Pause them. Read them. Go back to the chart to double check the work. Stocks on the move today, we had Apple, Tesla, Target, Google, ALB is Albemarle, and GitLab didn't hit its number. That's the only one, so it's off the board. Let's take a look at some charts. Apple opened below the first number, never got to the second number, so it was officially a no trade. Tesla, 178.95 was my number. They came into it, they bounced a little bit, got below it, bounced up. They gave you the deal. It was 178.95 today. We had participants in the live room in Tesla. Target was a short trade. They came into this zone up here. They went through all the numbers. They bounced back and forth. They gave you the trade. They gave you the base hit a few times and finished right smack in the middle at the second number. Funny how that works. First order of business in resistances. They stopped going in the direction they're going. Pretty much when you look at this after the fact, Target went sideways at this area at this resistance zone all day. They gave you the chop shop formation to give you the trade out of it. We had some traders short in the live room. They got paid. Google, 131 and a quarter. They spiked it. They rallied back. They gave you the deal. Google's number worked, 131 and a quarter. Albert Marley, tough customer today. Cut through the first number, second number. Tried to fight the third back to the second. And then they melted at the end of the day. If you painted by the numbers, you got out even by lunchtime, but that's about it. It melted down the rest of the day. What can we learn from Camp IWM today? A lot of traders will want to call this a failed breakout. They'll want to say, market tried to break out above the former high. It failed. You have a failed breakout. Well, I look at that and say, maybe you have a failed breakout, but what you have is a spike to high, pull it back. You're still above all the moving averages, still above the 20 period moving average. This is a pullback in an uptrend. You revert to the weekly chart. This is an uptrend above all the moving averages. You're trying to eclipse these highs over here from December of 23, and they're working on it. Maybe it morphs into something more on the downside, but at face value, above all the moving averages, it's a pullback in an uptrend at face value. What about the folks down at the transportation department? My second favorite market leading indicator next to Camp IWM, but a number one canary in the coal mine, giving up the convergence of the 20 and the 50 period moving average on the daily chart. Could you make a case? Now it's not there yet, but could you make a case that you have a potential, and I repeat potential, head and shoulders formation in the making? You have to get below this thing. This is called a neckline. If you don't get below the neckline and close below the neckline, you do not have a head and shoulders pattern. If you don't get below the neckline, there's nothing here. A lot of you will want to look at that. You'll see it on the Twitter sphere and Instagram, Instacart, whatever the hell it is. Just keep in mind, it's not until it is. How about we clear up the noise and go to the weekly chart? What do you have? Above all the moving averages, trend is your friend. It's back and forth. There's nothing really material going on here there's no material change from yesterday from last week when you look at the weekly chart it clears up the back and forth daily banter it takes the news mainly out of the appearance on the chart what about the q people so they came into the 20 period moving average bounced off a little bit come back to revisit home base nothing wrong with that trend is your friend however the weekly chart was a little bit far from home base. We talked about it a few times. It's not out of the ordinary for them to either go sideways for a while, let home base creep up to price, or come back down as home base creeps up to price. They'll meet somewhere in the middle or get close, work off some of the quote-unquote overbought condition that can't be measured. But yet we do know that she doesn't like to get too far from home base. Home base is the 20 period moving average and she's a little bit far on the weekly chart or was as of last week from home base. It's coming in a little bit at present. 
Anything wrong with the financials? No. If anything's wrong with the financials, nothing's wrong with the overall underlying theme of the market. The XLF was up one penny today. She's still in the range between 40.10 and 40.80, eating time off the clock in an uptrend on what we call a melt-up, grind-up situation. Smash Mouth came down three and a half bucks today, one and a half percent. Considering where it was on the chart, that's not out of the ordinary. You got a little sign or signal of a trend change yesterday. We talked about that. You're far from home base. It's not a wonder you're having a pullback operation. You have a breakup candle low. We talked about this last night. 213.35 is a former breakout area. So that zone between 213.35, the breakup candle low, maybe the gap down here, which comes in at to 1195 somewhere in that zone you're likely to find garden variety of chart support how about bitcoin spiked the former high of 69,000, pulled back a little bit or more than a little bit you can see here that when you look at even the uh, intraday hourly chart bitcoin after they spiked the high of 69,000, they got all the way to a low of 59,000. they came off ten thousand dollars that's why it's not a store of value. That's why it's a speculative instrument. I'm not saying people aren't making a ton of money in Bitcoin. I'm not saying people haven't made a ton of money in Bitcoin. They have, and that's fine. All I'm saying is it's not a store of value. It's a speculative investment. It's not a cash replacement. It's not a gold replacement. It's not a whole host of other things that a lot of people want you to believe. It is a speculative investment. It is a trading vehicle and a wild one at that. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense market analysis.